All right. Well, welcome to Safety Fest. Yet again. Whoa, something's loud. Um, welcome to Safety Fest yet again, everybody. Uh, today's day three. I definitely want to thank Judy's our speaker on we we, we nickname her the drug lady, uh, not for the drug hookup, but for the drug testing hookup. Um, she's here to talk about some interesting stuff besides just drug testing, also some COVID testing information, which I think everybody will find incredibly helpful. Again, this session will be recorded. We'll put it up on the C Inc. website, hopefully in about a week. Um, and that way, everybody who didn't have a chance to sign on can go ahead and sign on. And with that, I'm going to silence my mic until you need me. And it's all over to you. All right. Great. Well, as Matt said, today we're going to take a look at a product demo of lab-based saliva drug testing, which is the most accurate form of drug testing on the market. And after that, we're going to talk about some COVID testing. So let's talk about lab-based saliva drug testing. When you get the product from the laboratory, it comes in a little packet like this. Inside the packet is a small specimen bag, and there's also the swab. So what I'm going to do is uh, go through it just like I was administering a test. The really good thing about lab-based saliva drug testing is that it's perfect to use during COVID because you can easily have the administrator at one end of the six-foot table and the uh, donor at the other end of the six-foot table. Uh, and this is the way it's been forever, so it's nothing new. It's just that that fits into the COVID testing and the social distancing really nice. So basically, the administrator gives all the directions. The donor does all the work. So the administrator doesn't have to touch the test, doesn't have to touch any saliva. So the donor now is opening this packet. And inside the packet, you'll see there is a swab and what we call a little test tube. So now at this point, uh, what they want to do is actually there's Two things that they're going to be doing. One is completing a chain of custody form. And this is basically the same form that's used for urine drug testing. So it's been proven. Uh, it's got all the right information on it. And it helps to track the, the test during the process in the laboratory. So they fill out their part of the chain of custody form. You fill out your part of the chain of custody form. And for now, that's about it. So you're just going to put it down, take the swab packet, open it, take it out of the wrapping, and you'll see there's a flag on the end. Flag is down here, swab is here. So when this is positioned correctly in the mouth, it has to go down between the lower cheek and gum. The flag will be in the upright position. And the only reason that's important is because the only way this test won't work is if it doesn't get saliva on it. So typically tell them, put it between the lower cheek and gum, rub it a couple of times, and then look at the end of the swab. If they have the swab in the corner of their, in the center of their mouth, so it doesn't get any saliva on it, the flag will be like that. It will be horizontal. So you just have to watch for five minutes to make sure that the person has it placed correctly. And then after five minutes, you're going to ask them, to get the small test tube. And uh, you can also, you know, have them do anything on the chain of custody form during the five minutes, but you don't want them talking. And it's also important to note that before the test, they can't have anything in their mouth for 10 minutes. And the reason for that is that um, 
saliva in the mouth regenerates every 10 minutes. So if they had anything to eat or drink or whatever, it won't make any difference after 10 minutes. So you want to make sure that you have clean uh, saliva in them. So at this point, we instruct them to take the little test tube, point it end down so this bleed fluid doesn't leak, grab it, make a fist, rock the top off. Nice fluid. So then you take the swab out of your mouth, shove it down, break the handle off, and now you're going to put the lid on until you hear it snap. And now you're going to go to the chain of custody form and you'll notice at the bottom are security seals. So you take a security seal off put the lid in the middle and then put the two ends down each side. At this point, the donor will initial it, and that indicates that he or she put their seal on, that it was okay when it gets to the laboratory. If the seal is cracked or broken, it will not be analyzed by the laboratory. So then what they do is they take this, and we talked about the specimen bag, they put it in the front pocket of the specimen bag, and they take a copy of the chain of custody form, fold it in four, and put it in the back pocket. Seal it up, and it's ready to go to the laboratory. So we have a whole list of benefits to this test that we're going to go over in the uh, slide presentation. But that's basically it for the intercept test. And uh, Matt has been one of our customers for many years. And uh, I'm sure if you have any questions after the presentation on it, administering the test, that you'd be able to uh, give you some advice, or you can always give us a call, send us an email, or send us a text message. So at this point, Matt, I think we're going to get into the presentation. All right. And while you're pulling that up, I'll, I'll let everybody know. Yeah, we, we use it for all of our employees when we do our random testing. And we have several clients that use that as well. I will tell you the swab could taste a little bit better because I do it myself. So I can tell you her doing it without that little, ah, when she takes it out was impressive. Um, but other than that, I mean, the test is, I mean, almost safe. I know we've had a client that the employee said he was just somewhere at a party and, you know, that, that it was in the air, but he didn't do anything. And the, the saliva <laughs> test doesn't lie. As soon as they found out it was saliva test, he didn't get uh, unemployment. He was completely denied front employment benefits, the whole nine yards. And, you know, even unemployment right. explained to him the saliva test is not a urine test. You, you, you know, there's no there's not a fail like there is in the urine test. So um, makes it simple, pretty quick to come back with results. So. I'll give it back to you since you've got your presentation. You're going to share that now. Okay, terrific. Uh, and yeah, Matt brought up a good point about the taste. And basically, the swab has a saline solution on it. And the purpose of that is to make sure that your saliva gets moving in your mouth. Um, and I think that the reason I never flinch is because I am addicted to salt. It's a very bad habit. So to me, I'll take those tests all day. But other than that, you know, sometimes what we advise is that the administrator could have a pack of light, uh, lightsabers there or something that they can put in their mouth after the test. Um, but, you know, uh, sometimes people uh, that are taking the test are going to try to get you not to take it because it tastes so bad. And at that point, you figure they probably have something to hide. All right, so let's take a look at the benefits of uh, lab-based saliva drug testing. Uh, like I said, do you want to break your presentation? I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you want to bring your presentation? Oh, there you go. If you want to share your content, do you want me to share it or do you do you have it? Because it's not oh, it's not showing. Oh, it's not because it's showing on mine. Oh. 
Let me see. Let me go back. I'll just bring it up for you. Here you go. Can you see it? Uh, I still see my presentation that was up. Let me go back to the escape. Is that yours that's up there, Matt? Yeah, I pulled it up. It yeah. Okay. We'll just... I'll just tell you to go to the next slide. Um, before we go to the next slide, I think people can see me in the small box at the top. Let me show you. We'll talk about this. This is what synthetic urine looks like. This is why urine drug testing. It's almost like if you still do urine drug testing, you're a haven for drug users. This can be purchased on the internet for $32. It comes with a little pouch on the back to keep it at the right temperature. It has a temperature controlled strip on the front. They wrap it around there. They strap it onto their leg or their belly or their arm because when you go into the processing uh, collection center, you have to empty your pockets, but that's all you're allowed to do is empty your pockets. You uh, are not padded down. So people go into collection centers. Once they get in there, they make sure the stuff is at the right temperature. They open the lid, pour it in the cup, and they will pass a urine drug test. This stuff is proven time after time again. Uh, all you have to do is Google pass my drug test or synthetic urine and there's even youtube videos showing you how to how to uh, purchase synthetic urine and for and it's usually at this point i use usually get people to say oh we don't have to worry about that because we have observed testing well guess what they also have undies or panties with uh prosthetic devices hooked up the synthetic yarn. So it is very easy to pass with synthetic yarn. Just keep that in mind. All right. So let's, uh, if we can go to the next slide, Matt. And we'll take a look at the benefits of saliva swab drug testing. So we talked about the six feet distance. Uh, the administrator just gives uh, directions to the donor. It only takes five minutes of test. You get the negative results in 24 to 30 hours, which is extremely quick. That's online. Um, if there's a positive, then it does go to what's called a medical review officer. He'll contact your employee. Uh, and at that point, well, our MRO is a, a man. And so he'll get back to you via uh, email with the results of the investigation. The really cool thing is that you don't have any unsanitary tools to worry about. Uh, going in there in between people, worrying about did they cough in the room, uh, did they touch something. So, uh, and you don't have to worry about sending people out to a collection center and worrying about the same things. A couple of days ago, I went out for a blood test and you know, you have all these questions in your mind. Did, was somebody in here? Did they cough? Did they wipe it down? You have no idea of any of those things. So being able to do it in your facility is a huge benefit right now. Uh, also, a really nice thing is that this product is made in the United States since 1998. And we have more information on that. Uh, donor dignity. You don't have to get a blood prick. You don't have to uh, void in a cup. It eliminates a lot of those things. We have a chart that I'm going to show you too that it detects more positives than urine. Uh, and that study was based on 10 million drug tests. So it's a very substantial test. Um, the lab based saliva will detect drugs 10 minutes after they're used. If you're, it, and this happened actually to one of our customers, at, they went out into the parking lot at lunchtime. They saw three people in a foggy car. So of course she knew what was going on. She brought them in, told them to, and this was while they were still doing the urine drug testing, 
brought them in. They had to go immediately. Guess what? They came up negative. And that's because drugs take four to six hours to get into the urine. So not only was it embarrassing for her, but she had to let them go back to work because they were, they came up negative. So um, the fact that it can detect drugs within 10 minutes of use is really getting as close as you can, especially in the day, uh, in these days of recreational and medical marijuana. It's virtually impossible to cheat. As I mentioned, uh, synthetic urine, urine testing, you can become a haven for drug users. You don't have to worry about shy bladder or dilute specimens. And basically, um, a lot of your customers being in a hot manufacturing facilities or electrical contracting, being out on job sites in the summer, it's hot, they stay hydrated. So you can get dilute specimens either because people are trying to stay hydrated or uh, because they're trying to cheat the, their drug test. You don't have to look for open collection centers after five o'clock. You know, a lot of times you might be working past five o'clock on a job site. And after five o'clock, it's virtually impossible to find an open collection center. If you do, they're hugely expensive. Story, case in point, a contractor was doing a job down in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, they had an accident at around 5 o'clock. The closest place he could find an open collection center was outside of Baltimore. So he had to pay to drive that person up to the collection facility with the supervisor. And then two hours back, but that wasn't the worst of it. When, when they got to the collection center, they charged $300 for that after five o'clock urine test. Whereas with Intercept, the price is always the same, 24 seven. So if you do two shifts, three shifts, it's always the same. Um, you can do it anywhere, anytime, by anyone. We had a, a contractor who was working on the, uh, the bypass of uh, 95 a couple of years ago. And he used to just take all the tests out to the job site. And within a half an hour, everybody was tested and back on the job. They didn't have to go anywhere. Unproductive time. They were able to maximize their time on the job site. Uh, name recognition customers. And these are name recognition. Shell Oil, Kroger's, Publix, um, et cetera. It's legal in 47 states. It's not allowed in Maine, Vermont, or Hawaii. Uh, and yes, it is legally defensible. It has been to court 12 times and has never gone beyond the deposition stage. So, you know, that's the other comment I hear. Well, I can't use it uh, because I don't want to do this. That'll increase my liability. Well, no, it won't. So here's the first chart that we're going to talk about. Uh, Intercept was actually introduced in 1998, so it's been around for a long time, even though companies really haven't heard about it. Um, it it's the number one brand with all the voting going on, and um, you know, like I said, it was first on the market. And to me, that's really important because after about eight years. 10 years, there were competitor products on the market. And even though one of those products came from a pretty good name, that one in particular was recalled after three months because of problems with the accuracy. Uh, on the other hand, Intercept has never been recalled. So to me, it's you really have a lot of confidence in the product. Okay, here's my favorite chart. This is the study of a 10, I think it was a 12 million drug test. And it compared urine to saliva. And if this doesn't make you think, what will? We're taking a look at this, and I'll, I'll just take a look at three other drugs, marijuana, cocaine, opiates. 
was marijuana it detects 3.5 times more positives intercept does with cocaine it's twice as many positives i mean cocaine if somebody is high on cocaine on your job you want that person to be away not on your job uh and then the opiates it's one and a half times um and it's accuracy and performance like this that this past january um, the HHS Health and Human Services added laboratory-based oral fluid testing. So that's laboratory-based. It's not instant saliva. Laboratory-based saliva was the only one to get on the SAMHSA federal guidelines. And the SAMHSA is Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration, and that's tied in with DOT. So we are looking at intercept. Uh, to be DOT approved within the next year and a half or two years. And I have to tell you, it's been a long road. There's a lot, a lot of challenges that have been thrown up against Intercept. Even with all these statistics, um, urine drug testing is a much higher profit margin product. So companies want to keep doing that and making money, regardless of how safe Intercept makes companies. So I think that these, are, these statistics are just powerful. Okay, we talked a little bit about synthetic urine. Uh, and I forgot to mention that you can get that nifty little bottle of synthetic urine for about $34 on the internet. And like I said, just Google synthetic urine, you'll see it there. You can give me your credit card and you'll have it in a couple of days. That's it. Next slide. Okay, here's some statistics for you. And this is drug users in the workplace. 28% use drugs on their way to work. So when you're driving on the highway and you see somebody driving crazy and you say, oh, they're probably on drugs. Well, they probably are, according to these stats. 22 or 23 percent use drugs on their lunch break. 48 use it in the car, in the parking lot, just like my customer had that experience. 23 percent have cheated on a drug test. And I always stop to think, if, if that, why isn't that number 100 percent? It's just so darn easy to cheat a drug test that if they're not cheating a drug test, they might not be smart enough for the job they're interviewing for with you. 50% uh, of the people who, who, who are addicted are actually considered high functioning. And that's a comment I often hear. Oh, if I, if I find all the people that are on marijuana, I won't have anybody left. But it, it is absolutely a trade-off um, and putting your head in the sand when you're thinking that way. Uh, another concern is that 37% of cannabis users vape it. Now, normally, when you see somebody vaping something, you're assuming it's tobacco. But 37% of the times, it's not. And I was out to lunch with somebody, and she started vaping. And I thought, well, oh, okay, I know she used to smoke. And halfway through lunch, she told me it was marijuana in this vape. So, and you couldn't smell it, it was perfumed, no odor, no smoke. It was completely innocuous. Um, and also people on drugs tend to change jobs frequently. They're late, they file more workers' comp claims, and they uh, have a tendency to steal from the inventory to pay for their drug use. So if we want to summarize lab-based saliva drug testing, you can say it in three steps. You swab, you snap the handle off, and you seal the specimen. And that's it. Okay. Now we're going to get into the COVID testing. Uh, there is a lot of confusion in the COVID testing market. 
people are so desperate to make things better, they'll say, these tests are better than nothing, aren't they? And in many, many, many situations, they are not, and they're actually more harmful. We get offers almost weekly from companies selling COVID tests. And again, we only want high quality products. Most of them have an accuracy rating of 50 to 85%. You see, you're thinking, oh, okay. But what does that really mean? It means that there's 15% to 50% of the people running around with false negatives or false positives. So let's take a look at the false negatives. If you test 100 people and you have one of the worst tests of 50% accuracy, 50% will be accurately diagnosed, but 50% will have false negatives. So these are people thinking they don't have it, it could be asymptomatic, they're running around, infecting other people. It was just a really interesting situation of the wedding up in Maine. So there was, I think, 150 people there, and they all had a good time. Um, I don't remember if it was inside or outside, but at the end of the wedding, everybody went home. And, you know, after two weeks, nobody had this virus. And then one of the people that went home after the wedding went to visit a relative in a nursing home. From that one person in the visiting um, at the nursing home, 37 residents became positive and one person died. So you can be at these events and you can think to yourself, oh, this is nothing. I can go out and and party and get the and if you get it if you're false negative even if you're tested if you're false negative you're going to be spreading it asymptomatically so i always tell them when they say something like that it's better than nothing i say it's like putting a drop of food coloring in the ocean and expecting it to cover it's just not going to happen so don't don't use those tests the one thing that's been a little confusing for a lot of people is it's EUA or Emergency Use Authorization. And this is issued by the FDA. So it cuts down on all the um, clinical, I mean, a product still has to have clinical trials, but a lot of the paperwork is just being accelerated so it's faster. The problem that I'm seeing with peak tests is that they don't mention anything on any papers, anything about EUA. They don't mention anything about the accuracy. And then when I call them up and I start asking them, they say, well, oh, gee, I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that. And then I never hear from them. And the ones that do, I mean, that understand what EUA stands for, at least, tell me that we have applied for EUA. Applying for it, that means they could have just mailed the letter yesterday. You have no idea what apply for the EUA is. What you want to make sure is that the test has emergency use authorization. So there's a huge difference between applying for and having the authorization. Next. Definitions. Uh, and it's funny, we were joking around about this a couple, couple of weeks ago, you know, six months ago. Okay, people knew what an antibody was, but nobody knew what antigen was. Nobody knew what sensitivity was, and nobody knew what specificity was. So let me just go through this with you, uh, just in case. If you're using a COVID test or you want to make sure it's a good test. An antigen test means you have the virus. Antigen means you have the virus. 
antibody test, as most people would assume, means that you had the virus. You know, if you have antibodies in your body, that means you've had it. Sensitivity is what's called the true positive rate. On the other hand, so this is where we were getting into those percentages. If a test has a sensitivity rate of 80%, that means there's 20% false negative. So it's true positive and then you flip it around, false negative. A specificity rating is what's called a true negative. So, if you do a specificity test, and it's important to know which test you're using, some tests actually have both measurements. So if you're using a specificity test and it's 80% accurate, it detects 80% of the people without the disease. That means flipping it around 20% are false positive. So it is no longer a good excuse to say, I don't really care about that stuff. I just want to get them to test it for COVID because you could be throwing all your money out the door. What are you getting for it? You have to be a little knowledgeable on what these terms are. Normally, if you get a test, the test devices, and a lot of these are sort of like the blood test, uh, the blood prick test, or even the saliva test, there's what's called um, a product insert. And the product insert is stuck in with the product. And if you look on that, you should be able to find the sensitivity and the specificity. So that's where you find it. Uh, a lot of the salespeople really don't even know what that is. So um, these people selling these tests. All right. So let's take a look at two tests that we're really uh, we're really behind. So one of the companies we've dealt with for many many years. It's almost three decades uh, because they're such a moral and ethical company. Uh, they're coming out with two tests. They're coming out with an antibody swab, which looks just like the lab-based saliva drug test that we just went through. Um, it'll tell you that you had the virus. They're looking at about 98% accuracy. The results in 24 to 30 hours. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Uh, it should be coming out in the fourth quarter. The best thing of all is it's made in the USA, employing Americans. But it's also great because if there's problems with the test, you can get back to the, the person. You don't have to worry about talking to another country, time differences, getting somebody to speak English, whatever. Um, but I, this test will be available. I don't see its use as much as the other tests we're going to talk about. Because right now, it tells you if you have antibodies, but unfortunately, right now, we don't know what that means. Um, because there's been some talk about people can get reinfected with COVID after two to three months. So does that mean that the antibodies are only good that long? And then you'd have to test people maybe three or four times a year. Uh, and what does it really mean? So I think that test will become much popular in the future when we understand the COVID virus. But uh, the test that's going to be the game changer will be the antigen test. And not because it's an antigen test, but because it's going to be an instant antigen swab. And um, I recently learned, so we have to change this slide just for um, correctness. But it started out being a saliva antigen test. And it is now changed to a, um, a nasal test. However, not the kind of nasal test that goes all the way back to the throat of your 
of your mouth. You know, somebody once said, yeah, the kind that goes all the way back to your brain. I mean, those things are awful when you think about it. So this swab is just going to be at the end of your nose, and you have to just twirl it around a few times to get the um, mucus on the spot. So that has changed from the instant saliva. It's going to be instant nasal saliva. Um, so it's going to tell you if you have the virus. Again, 98 plus accuracy. The product is still in clinical trials, so we don't have the numbers yet. Uh, it's going to be what we call instant, uh, but it's projected to be 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, again, when it's out of clinical trials, we'll have a definite number. Um, anywhere, anytime. It's actually being uh, manufactured and certified to be an in-home test. So you know it's going to be easy, easy to use. And um, the company that's manufacturing this has actually manufactured other many other tests. Uh, for SARS, for HIV, for a lot of the other terrible pandemics that we've had. So they know what they're doing. It's a science-based company, and um, they will be getting the e EUA, not just the plumbing. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be so easy that you could test people as they come in the door to come to work. You could do that once a week if you wanted to, um, or as frequently as you need to. But it's, you don't have to worry about sending somebody out to an insanitary bathroom to give a blood prick or uh, to do a saliva test. There will be precautions that you have to take, and these will follow the CDC guidelines, staying six feet apart. But again, the administrator just gives the vaccine. Uh, the donor does all the work. Coming out in the fourth quarter, and again, it's made in the USA. So let's just take a quick summary of tests on the market. Uh, it's true that the tests being used in the hospitals are very accurate. Uh, those are typically the tests that go all the way back into your throat. They're expensive, it takes a long time for results, which is a problem. Uh, and you can't purchase these for the workplace. Uh, a lot of them have a swab, and then it has to go either to a laboratory or into a piece of uh, equipment. And we have tried to get the uh, more accurate ones for our customers, and they're just not available. Um, for the workplace, uh, and we have two situations here for the workplace. Uh, some tests may require the donor to spit or drool into a tube. And there are two emerging uh, popular tests for this. The test tube is kind of like maybe an inch in diameter. Uh, and you basically have to drool into that tube until you get a certain amount of saliva. And when you see that test, it's Sounds great. It's a saliva test that's easy. It's better than urinating in a cup. But when you check out the price, they're ranging between $170 and $270 for one test. Well, how many companies can really afford to do that? Um, and also, uh, we've tried to get the sensitivity and specificity rates for those tests and never get an answer from those manufacturers. I, I have no doubt it will be forthcoming because they are reputable manufacturers. But again, it's sort of like the cart is coming before the horse. Um, some are blood pricks. And normally when you have that, you have to hire a medical professional to do those tests. So even though the tests themselves might be cheap, by the time you hire somebody to come on site or send your employee out to somewhere, that's where the price starts going up. A um, couple, of, well, I guess it's maybe a little over a week ago. Um, a test came out, it was all over the news, because it was going to be an antigen test that's really cheap. Well, the swab was cheap, 
but then you had to buy the equipment to analyze the test, and that was not cheap. So it's very confusing in the marketplace right now. You don't know what the price means. Is it really the end user price, or is it just like something uh, to get people in, into sucked into the product? So that price, that product that came out, uh, just to show you what's going on behind the scenes. Um, it was announced it's going to be really cheap. I called the manufacturer because we deal with that manufacturer and was told that the government purchased 150 million of these tests and they can only make 50 million a month. So what goods are going to do the common person or the, the company that wants to test employees? You know, it's not going to be available for at least three months. So that's about it for those tests. So here's the bottom line. If you want to get a COVID test, um, and I was talking to Matt about this, we'd be happy to work with his company uh, regarding those two tests and the one in particular, the antigen test that's been labeled. Uh, Dr. Burks actually, before she knew about this product, said if there was an instant antigen test on the market that was reasonably priced and very accurate, that would be a game changer. So that's the product that we are really waiting for. And I don't want to clog up the pipelines with some cheap tests that aren't going to work right. So we have stayed away from them. If you think you have to find out about getting uh the COVID test, these are the things you have to look out for. Has EUA been granted or did they just apply for EUA? Is it blood, saliva, swab, instant or lab based? Because this all affects the end price of it. Find out the specificity and the sensitivity rate so you know the false negatives and false positives. Find out where the test is made. Uh, what we're starting to see now is a lot of universities have developed saliva drug tests. And it sounds good when you hear it on the news, but when you look into it, basically they don't have the produ production capabilities produced for anybody other than the university. So a lot of universities are uh, manufacturing saliva tests test the students once a week. Uh, for small schools, that's not really that much, maybe 1,300 tests. But when you take a look at a, a school like Penn State that has 50,000 students, that's a lot of tests to be able to uh, produce. And also, what's the real end user price? If you hear something that is so cheap that it, it, it's unbelievable, well, then it probably is unbelievable. There's no such thing as free lunch, especially with COVID testing. So you want to find out if a doctor or a nurse has to uh, do the test. How does it? How is it analyzed? Um, and how are the results interpreted? So if you're going to go out shopping for a COVID test, this is what you have to be concerned with. Next. So. The goal of drug and COVID testing, when you really think about it, it's having your employees go home every evening. And that means having a safe workplace. So when people tell me they're not doing drug testing or they don't care about detecting the most marijuana positives or any of those things, they're really not looking at the true goal here because those people on drugs could cause an accident and then kill one of your employees and it, it could have a disastrous effect on their families and for anybody. So having your employees go home every evening is your goal. Um, keep in mind the value of detecting the most positive drug positives and having the best COVID testing.
There's one more slide there. And if you have any questions, give me a call, send me an email, send me a text. And that's it. I don't know if there's any questions. Judy's been really great about answering questions for us. We, you know, we constantly get questions from clients. You know, we get the old, well, you know, marijuana use is decriminalized. So how can we possibly police it and stuff like that? And any of those questions, I'll be happy to reach out to her and, and you guys can do with that as well. Um, as you saw, Virginia standard is coming up. Uh, or it's in place now for COVID. Um, I have a feeling some of these states are holding off until they get some of this testing data because they know some of these tests are starting to come out. So I think although Virginia was a pioneer in getting a uh, a COVID specific standard written, I think you have a few of them waiting in the wings, A, to see how Virginia's is playing out, but also B, to wait for some of this testing. So when the testing comes out, it, it's going to almost be, I can definitely see where OSHA is going to push for, you're going to have to figure out a way to get the testing done. So uh, we'll stay on top of it. We'll let you know, um, as Judy said before, these these manufacturers have such big orders coming in. They don't even look at you unless you're going to buy, you know, 1,000 or 1,500 units. And that sounds like a lot for one client. But thankfully with C, we have over 100 clients. So if we everybody needs to buy, you know, the 20s, the 50s, whatever, we should be able to put a pool together to where we can get in there and, and get you guys some testing as well. So. Um, that's our hopes as of now. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll leave the mic open for a minute and we'll go ahead and uh, shut this off the, the recording, but go ahead and turn your mic on. I don't know, Holly or Bill, if you have anything. Holly, I'm looking at the chat box, so if you have a question, feel free to type it and I'll, I'll ask it for you, but uh, we can go from there. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of information to consume at one time, so. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I don't have any questions, Matt. The, the only thing I, uh, I definitely be interested in, in pulling like you're talking about, uh, and and uh, and getting in, getting some that way when they're mailed. Okay, um, definitely. We'll make sure you're on the mailing list. Obviously, you got the notice for this, so we'll 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 put it out to everybody when we know it's coming and we have pricing. Uh, Holly, your question of when will they be available? And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Judy. We're looking at like Novemberish. Is that the still the target? Yeah. yeah. The, um, so here's what's been going on. They, they keep telling me fourth quarter, fourth quarter, and that was one thing. But now that the newspapers are picking up on this test, uh, the CEO is really on the hot seat. And he had a meeting with the governor of Pennsylvania, which was televised. So that's putting more pressure on him. And just last week, it was on CBS Evening News. Uh, that it was going to be coming out fourth quarter. So I really have no doubt that it, it's going to come out fourth quarter because it, this company is just incredible. They know what they're doing. Uh, they've already started doubling their workforce to ramp up the productions. And the uh, they're doubling the workforce and they're doubling the uh, manufacturing space. So... Even without that pressure, I think they would still be able to do it for fourth quarter. Um, but now that everybody's knowing, this guy's, I would think, <laughs> he's on a very high seat. It's good to keep the pressure on, I guess. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, again, I want to thank you all for coming out, and we will get this posted hopefully by next week. So, uh it, you know, if you know somebody who would do good, watch this, or you want to go back and see some of these parts and pieces, by all means, you can go to seeinkonline.com. Uh, we have a couple more sessions tomorrow and Friday. Friday, we'll have OSHA, Vosh, and Mosh. Uh, tomorrow, we have both uh, Preferred Insurance talking about insurance stuff, as well as, um, which is going to be good with fleet safety and sort of things. We'll probably be mentioning these tests again tomorrow during that session. And then we also have a session from uh, George Stallings talking about the shortages of PPE, which I think is timely. So if you all want to jump back on there, feel free. If not, again, we'll try to get all these posted within the next week or so. Thank you, Judy. And uh, as always, it's been a pleasure. You always get great marks whenever you, you help us with Safety Fest. You've done it in the past for us, and we can't thank you enough for that. And uh, hopefully we're getting that information out to the people who need it. 
Holly also uh, says thank you. So there you go, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe. And as always, if you ever have a safety question, you're more than welcome to reach out to me, uh, Matt Murphy, safetymurph13 at AOL.com. Been the same email address for 23 years now. And uh, 703-930-2760 is the cell. So you can always get a hold of me. So with that, Thanks, Matt. I will Matt. call it and we will see everybody uh, at the next session. You got it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.